Hey there and welcome to the Wella Professionals YouTube channel. My name is Eddie, I'm a global trainer and today I'm going to share with you Rose Gold. As you can see, my client has old, grown out, blonde highlights and balayage with lots of lightness and brightness on the lengths and ends. So I'm gonna use my go-to technique for brightening up tired balayage or highlights that is really quick and really simple and salon friendly. I section out a herringbone technique at the top and then just around the sides, the front hairline. My go-to is of course my favorite lightener, Blondor Plex, which I am mixing with Wiloxin Perfect 4%. I'm gonna start around the front to create a nice bright face frame, as well as a money piece at the top. People always ask me what type of weave to choose and in what scenario, and I always say, let the hair decide. For the very front hairline, you can see I'm doing almost a baby light. Mayu's hair is super fine around the hairline, so if I try and do something larger, the hair just won't let me. I turn my brush to the side after I apply to the mid lengths and ends and blend towards the root. I then finish off with the soft bristle brush, continue to blend at that root area for that soft transition from dark to light. I fold the foil out of the way and that is the first foil done. Second foil, again, I'm doing a fine weave, not so much a baby-like, but still a very fine weave as May's hair is naturally fine in texture. I do want it bright, but I still want more of a natural result. Applying to the mid lengths and ends, and again, blending at that root area, right up to the root. I turn my brush sideways to really blend at that root and capture any tension that I may be losing before I seal my foil. My last section here, you can see, I'm starting with a sub slice to leave a little bit more hair in between the two highlights. I again, do a fine weave for a more natural look and start to apply straight away on the mid lengths and ends. Once I've done that, I repeat on the opposite side and we're ready to move into the top. Next, I move to the fringe area. I'm gonna let the shape of the front hairline decide the angle that I choose, work from the center forehead to the recession area. From there, I'm still gonna work with a fine weave, but a slightly deeper weave for a more pronounced money piece around the forehead. I apply the lightener where needed and then blend at that front hairline, always blending at that root with the brush sideways so you get that seamless blend. Continuing on with a fine weave, but in a larger section, you'll see to this area there is much more hair, so there is much more hair in my weave. I'm not changing from a fine weave, I'm just ending up with more hair because there is more hair. Then I repeat one last time in the front section for a third final weave. So now I've created that money piece and face frame, I wanna connect the natural roots to the existing highlights and balayage in the mid lengths and ends. So what I'm gonna do is start to pivot with my section to the herringbone on the top of the head. This time, I'm leaving a bigger gap, taking a sub slice and taking a larger weave, still on the medium side, but more pronounced and more defined. Here, what I wanna do is slightly diffuse any lines in the hair with a little bit of back combing, just removing those short baby hairs or the new growth and secure it with the comb. Then I can really focus on saturating those mid lengths and ends with my lightener and blend at that root area for that soft transition. You can still see I'm going quite, quite close to the root. However, with that little bit of diffusion, and um, with the back combing, it will softly blend away those lines. Really important in doing this, that if you're only doing a little bit of back combing, you really focus on blending those highlights gently. 
I repeat that in pivoting sections, working around not completely to the end of the section, but almost. I wanna leave a little veil at the crown area. I then move on to the other side and repeat with the money piece in the very, very front, followed by my teasy lights to the rest of the section. So here you can see again, you'll get a closer look from a different angle of the type I weave I'm doing with the teasy lights and that gentle diffusion on the natural root area. If you wanna learn more about teasy lights, there's an awesome video with my buddy Fergal. We'll put the link below in the description and he does great hints and tips on great teasy lights. Typical, at this point I walk away because the most annoying thing that can happen to a hairdresser happened, I ran out of foil. So once I got some fresh foil, I continued with my last two sections to the top of the head. Again, leaving out that crown area so that I have a little bit of a veil and a little bit more of a shadow at the back of the head. And here it is. A quick, easy top up for any balayage or grown out highlights. Blonderplex could be developed for up to 50 minutes. However, on Mayu's hair, she's so fair and naturally that she is ready to go with just 4% after 35 minutes. So I remove the foil and of course, rinse thoroughly to get all the lightener out of the hair. Then I apply Wellaplex number two. This is my favorite product for removing any kind of backcombing or teasing in the hair. So I always start off with my fingers to remove the bulk of any teasing or backcombing first because the best comb that we have is of course our fingers. Then I finish off with a comb. After I develop that for 10 minutes, and rinse eye shampoo with Color Motion Plus shampoo. Because Mayu has combination hair, she is so much natural at that root area, but she has heavily lightened mid lengths and ends. Color Motion Plus is perfect for her hair because it's the perfect balance of color protection, but also care and repair for those lightened areas. The last step is blonde or sealing care for five minutes and we are done, ready to tone. I'm gonna do a blonde toning service and a color melt on Mayu's hair today using Collagen Perfect. On screen, you can see my root shadow formula, but also the rose gold I'm gonna use. Before I apply the toner, I'm gonna to apply Marula Oil Blend Scalp Primer. Mayu sometimes has an uncomfortable scalp during coloring processes or toning services, so I wanna make it as comfortable for her as possible. So you only want about five mils on the whole head and we are ready to section for our final step. I'm doing a blonde toning service today on Mayu's hair and I'm gonna work on the hair that is towel dried. Before I start to tone, I wanna separate the front hairline where that money piece and face frame section is away from the top and sides and then lastly separate the back where I can start to apply. First up is my root shadow. You can see here, I'm applying straight from the roots down to meet where the lightener starts. I'm not overlapping onto the lightened areas. And this is why I'm choosing to work with a permanent color to tone today. When blonde toning with a permanent color, you'll get like a natural base bump or a distortion of the natural root. This does two things for me. One, it will gently brighten the natural hair for an overall lighter look, but it'll also help me blend between the natural hair and the fresh and old highlights, giving you more of like a seamless blend from dark to light. This is one of the key benefits of using an alkaline or a permanent color to tone. I work in a brickwork sectioning technique down to the nape of the neck, really looking at the hair that I'm picking up each time. Where does the lightness start? And I work to that point. Once I have the roots applied, now it is time to color melt. I'm gonna work in cross sections at a diagonal 
to the back of the head. I'm taking each section down, not too big, but not too small. I start by making sure I have enough product on that root for my root shadow, comb through the mid lengths and ends, but being sure not to comb the root color through the mid lengths and ends. Then the next step is I really saturate those mid lengths and ends with my rose gold formula. Again, as getting closer to the top, I make sure I have enough product on that root, making sure it's coming down to meet those lightened areas, be they old or new. And then separately saturating the mid lengths and ends of the hair with the rose gold formula, getting lots and lots of product in there. I want something that is quite impactful, so I really need to get the pigment inside the hair and lots of product. The last step that I do is then use my fingers to merge the root shadow and the rose gold formula together. Working it in between two fingers gently, make sure that they blend nicely, but without pulling the root color down too far. What I don't wanna do is have that root color stretch too far down and lose the brightness of those old and new blonde highlights. Once I have the back applied, I'm then gonna to start to apply the root area of the top section. I'm doing this separately because here I have a lot of the newer highlights, so I really, really wanna be careful that I don't start to lose them, only applying to the root down to where those new highlights begin. Then I can start to color melt on those mid lengths and ends. Remember what I said earlier, working with a permanent color to tone really means I'll get that base bump on the natural hair and they will blend beautifully together. Here you can see again, saturating those mid lengths and ends and then blending with my two fingers to merge the light and the dark only where I want them to merge, not dragging them down to the mid lengths and ends. Continue that towards the top of the head, then repeat on the opposite side. The front hairline is where I change my technique. Here, I don't wanna do a color melt, I want to do a micro root. Because I have those highlights right to the very root, I'm simply gonna tap a tiny little bit of my root shadow on the bare root only. This is gonna give a more of a natural effect and just soften the transition from natural to light. Once I have that micro root in, I'm gonna to start to apply directly onto the mid lengths and ends with my rose gold, repeating the same technique using my index and middle finger to merge the two colors together, but being so careful that I don't drag that root shadow down the hair because I don't want to lose that lightness and brightness around the face. I repeat on the opposite side and we're done with the blonde toning step. First thing I do after that is rinse thoroughly, emulsify and make sure I've removed all the toner from Mayu's hair. Because I've used a permanent color today, I'm gonna to give a light shampoo again with Color Motion Plus shampoo, but a shampoo only with the palms of my hands. Rinse that and finish off with Color Motion Plus Express Post Color Treatment. This will restore the hair's natural pH in only 30 seconds. I rinse thoroughly and we're done. And this is the result. I hope you like it. I love toning with Collison Perfect because the tones are so rich, so even, and it really gives the hair a beautiful, healthy looking shine. The blonde toning service softly bumps that base so that transition from dark to light is so seamless, yet you can see beautiful highs and lows all through the hair as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and who knows, maybe I'll do another video if nobody comes for me in the comments. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon.